Let's bring in Nationals MP, Bridget McKenzie, and the Indian MP, Zali Stegel. Bridget and Zali, good to see you. Thanks for your time this morning. But uh, energy wars, I want to start there. Bridget, we'll start with you. Is the coalition about to officially go nuclear? <laughs> Uh, well, great to be with you, Peter. Uh, I've been on this nuclear bandwagon for a long time and I'm super excited to see colleagues and indeed the Liberal and the National Party embrace what is a zero emissions technology tested around the world uh, and one where all our major competitors internationally use to make sure they can have high paying uh, manufacturing jobs, keep the lights on, uh, keep their industrial economies going uh, in a zero emissions future. I just got back from uh, Dubai and went to COP and attended a net zero uh, global forum there on the sidelines. And to hear from uh, the Greens in Finland, uh, the Democrats in the US uh, and young people from around the world who are interested in a zero emissions future embrace nuclear. And it really is exciting to know that Australians will have a choice about how we get to net zero. So, so is that confirmation, is that going to be a key plank for the coalition going into the next election? Well, I think you can't say you have ambitions to get to net zero by 2050 as a country and not have a pathway that's credible to get there. Uh, what we've seen from the Labor Party and their pathway and the pathway that Zali would be uh, advocating is that we're 100% renewable. And that is just unrealistic. It's untested, it's risky, it's dangerous. We've seen the implications right now, this week in my home state of Victoria. There is a way to use existing fuel sources um, longer as yeah. we transition and then have renewables firmed by nuclear, which is going to be much more realistic for an industrial-sized sure. economy such but, but as is, ours. But is this, is, this, is this going to be confirmed that you are going, that the coalition, you and the Liberal Party, are going to take nuclear to the next election? Well, Peter, people can read the front page of the Oz uh, and uh, the Fin Review uh, as well. Don't squib it, don't squib it, Bridget. Are, are you, are you, is this <laughs> yes or no? Uh, I'm telling... We've been very clear, both the Liberal and the National Party, um, post the election, about exploring this issue. And the reality is that the path that Labor's put us on is untested. And the Prime Minister's announcement today shows he's finally, finally seen the light that there are losers in the pathway that he's chosen, something that we, particularly in the Nats, have been saying for a long time, uh, except... Yeah, and so that's why he's in the hunter today. OK. Zali, let's bring you in. So it is becoming more likely that short-term and long-term climate targets will not be reached here. So why not consider next-generation, zero-emission nuclear energy to work alongside renewables? Because the reality is it doesn't exist at an affordable scale. And I think you have to pick up Bridget for two things she said there. And one is actually very telling. She acknowledged that what she wants really, and other Nationals MPs have said so in Parliament, they want to continue on existing fossil fuel energy sources for longer, uh, which is why they don't have an interest. But that, but that is the most reliable. It's the most reliable and still doing most Go of the heavy Victoria. lifting. Victoria. Ca carry on, Zali. That, that, have I still got you? Oh, we might have lost Zali there, uh, unless she's good at holding a straight face. But I'm uh, happy to. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy anyway, yeah, to, just uh, ca carry on with that point. Yeah, it looks like we might have frozen there, Bridget. But carry on uh, on that yeah. point. So yeah. we're just just on nuclear, where would you like to put them, and what would you do with the waste? I, th I think that's probably the two key questions that people, you know, will will be wondering about. Well, I think I just wanted to pick up on where the attack yeah. Zali was going on. The fact is they're going to say it takes too long and uh, it costs too much. Now, I, when I was in COP28 in Dubai, Dubai commissioned nuclear power plants in Baraka in 2012. They started to build them. They're online in 2020. That's the reality of the modern-day uh, version of nuclear technology. So every time the Labor Party and the Teals come out with that argument, uh, mm. they're absolutely false. They're using 1950s... Um, okay. Research. Hey, Bridget, so in terms we've, we've of got where Zali. Put them... she, she, Zali's bounced oh, okay. back to us. Zali, um, we just lost you for a moment there. Can you just finish the point that you were about to make? Oh, look, I think this, this is a distraction to avoid uh, transitioning uh, to. Um, 
renewable energy by the nationals. We know this is purely political. It's a distraction and a delaying tactic. They are refusing to have a 2035 target, which requires us to transition now of fossil fuels. But you're not even going to reach that target. And are arguing for that to continue. Exactly. Now, on nuclear, can I just point out, there is no affordable nuclear for Australia. That is the reality. Every country needs to play to its natural advantage and nuclear is just not it for Australia. We have the most abundant wind and solar, which means our energy will be so much cheaper. So if the coalition's plan is 10 times more expensive electricity via nuclear, take that to the election and be realistic and be honest with the Australian people about where you are proposing to put nuclear. No locations are identified by them and no costings that are realistic. I was on the inquiry when it came to should we uh, lift the moratorium on nuclear energy and the coalition itself acknowledged they were not in a position to do so. So I think this is a furphy, it is a distraction, a, right. a distraction from moving to renewable we're, energy in the past. You've got to admit that nuclear is going to take a whole lot, of, whole lot less space than solar and wind farms. Well, again, tell me where. Where are the coalition okay. planning to put nuclear? Your, your response to that, Bridget? Well, we'll have more to say towards the election, but the fact is Zali would prefer 28,000 kilometres of transmission lines, not in her community, but carpeting uh, the regions. And we've seen what happens when you have an over-reliance on renewables. In my home state of Victoria, hundreds of thousands of families and businesses without power. So it's very they easy for Zali Bridget. to, the you know, have the unicorn fantasy. I'm sorry, I'll let oh, you speak. You uh, I am interested you, in... Yeah, just... the just fi Sorry, just fin yeah, Excuse Zali, me. just hold off. Zali, just fuel. hold off. Zali, finish your point, Bridget, Energy and then we'll plant. go to Zali. Bridget, finish your point. Um, Zali would like to think that the laws of economics and physics no longer exist. The reality is they do. We want to get to net zero, but we want mm. a realistic pathway to get there. Existing sites, existing transmission lines, existing workforces. Okay, Zali, you're, you can close. Complete unicorn and just absolute uh, make believe that Bridget and the coalition are in like the rest of the world talking about coalition. The reality is Victoria has an outage because it's relying on an ageing fossil fuel power, coal powered power station that has tripped that's and gone there's out. No renewable we have too. to transition to modern day technology, and for Australia. It is simply not nuclear, and the coalition seem unable but to. But you got to admit, that. and the reason, got... the reason, they simply are trying to delay the transition to renewable, which must occur now between now and 2035. Well, they're just not coming along fast enough, and 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 well, and, and the fossil right. fuels are doing all the heavy lifting, are they not, Zali? That's no, right. the fossil fuels are fading out. It's like we're insisting on driving the 35, 40-year-old car that is inefficient and, and dirty. The reality is that technology has pa is past its due date and we have to move on to modern That's technology. That's not true. They're the building new... The coalition are so stuck in the we past. They just can't move on.